Um, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mikey, and I'm the director of Nurses for Nurses. I've been with the organization since January 2018. Um, so the last AGM was my first time actually coming out and meeting everybody and um, getting to know about the organization. So it's just uh, just about a year now. Um, I'm a registered nurse by background, and I currently work in more of an administrative care coordination role with the Local Health Integrated Network. Um, so just a brief uh, history on NFN for those of you that aren't aware. So um, the NFN group uh, was pretty well, like the idea was pretty well, um, so we got together kind of with the idea when the organization was put together in the, uh, with the intent that um, doctors weren't the only venue that this organization can help um, improve or benefit uh, Nick Roberts' healthcare system. So there was originally a team a couple years ago, um, maybe four to five nurses, um, they met up regularly, got, did some work together, um, and then did a first trip back in, out in 2016. Um, some collection, some information was collected then, and you know they had some ideas with what they were going to do. But unfortunately, um, after the trip coming back, um, due to you know everyone's schedules and that, um, nothing really came out of you know what was done. And then uh, you know it's seemingly that it is difficult to maintain nurse volunteers, um, you know, just due to the varying schedules, shift work, um, and there's just not, sometimes there's not capacity to take on a volunteer role uh, with work in school and all that. Um, so there had been no activity for a while, a couple of years, um, and then uh, Kathy, who was with that uh, primary group, uh, original group, um, she's still uh, quite involved with us, and she's still one of our team members. Uh, she's the one that introduced me to uh, DFD. Um, so since then, again, since just last year, I've been determined to get NFN together and grow the team and get our project going. Uh, see here. Um, so right now, our goal is to partner and support with local Nicaraguan nurses. Um, evidently, there are enough nurses in Nicaragua, unlike the physician shortage issue, um, and they're, they've taken a look at it and their education is quite standardized and to par with North American standards, so that wasn't the concern. Um, originally, the hope had been um, project implementation from a need or uh, an issue voice from Nicaraguan nurses that we would uh, talk with, but uh, more recently, specifically yesterday, um, it has been determined that it is, would be more um, tangible and feasible to better support and assist in strengthening existing community projects or programs in Nicaragua. Um, so then this would better result in strengthening our relationships with nurses, healthcare members in Nicaragua, which then can contribute to future Nurses for Nurses plans. Uh, so we do have a, uh, me and Andrew do have a trip scheduled next month and look forward to um, hashing out a lot of work that needs to be done there and better focus of what our efforts would be put into. Um, let's see here. So from this weekend alone, a lot of this year has been sort of organized and sorted out. Um, as I mentioned before, sorry, earlier today, um, NFN will, it has been determined that we'll have an ongoing fundraising for our maternal child health care kits, um, as these kits were a major ask and identified need for the rural health clinics that we have connections with. So um, ideally, whenever we know that a trip will be made, there will be like a, a pocket of money from that we have fundraised for over the year that we can um, order these kits as needed. Um, let's see, so for this year, we're looking forward to having a couple nurse, uh, fundraising events. Uh, and we also collaborate with sometimes the U of T nursing students um, in their global health interest group to increase awareness and global health issues uh, and trigger conversation about international development within the nursing students there. Last year we did have an NFN event, uh, sorry, an NFN event with the U of T nursing students uh, with a nurse speaker and we hope to do the same this year. So lastly, I just made a note that I want to have, thank everyone from this organization for their continued support. Um, it's been a shift uh, from, I could say, speak for myself as well as any other nurses that do come on, that this is a shift from our clinical patient care hat and just learning the ins and outs of how the organization works and I've learned so much from everyone um, from this organization and how everything goes and we're excited for like, 2019 as for NFM. Um, so for the sake of introductions, my name is Ahmed. I am the Director of Research, been with the organization since 2015 and um, been working in the capacity of a director since 2017. Like, yeah, no, June, yeah, June 2017. Yep. Um, so I'm going to focus less on the previous year and more on what's to come. Um, really, what this past year has been is just a formative year to learn um, what research's place in the organization is, um, 
historically, uh, neither programs nor ops have benefited from research, and research on its own hasn't generated a lot of output um, or attracted a lot of people into the organization. So 2018 was mostly just to learn about how we could change that. Um, and the most important way is what Andrew uh, introduced, which is that we should be using uh, research first and foremost to benefit the students, but also to involve them in the organization in a way where anybody else on the Canadian side of things that comes into the organization can join in um, and ultimately benefit our students. So to that end, we developed um, what I could describe as a research framework. There you go. Okay, so um, this is from the point of view of Kimberly right now. So Kimberly is running an event called Days for Girls. And what that essentially is is a, an event that goes from community to community and educates uh, young, girls, young girls in rural communities about uh, women's health issues, um, a, lot of, a lot of the kind of issues that these communities don't get enough education about. So in the past, she's run uh, some of these events and done some preliminary research, talked around to the relevant people um, as to what they need and what uh, any research in those communities could look like. So once that's done, um, where we come in is we help her out and determine the research outline for our project. Um, what the research outline then allows us to do is to apply for grants, which is the most important. Yeah, that's why I wanted to do it. Apply for grants, which is the most important part, and then continue holding events. Uh, the main key here is that the events that are being held from the point where we determine the research outline are done to collect data. Uh, for the research, as opposed to the preliminary events, which was just to learn about uh, the research question. Once the grants are applied for, uh, the money goes to two places. It goes to collecting data and holding more events. Um, and then it also goes towards analyzing data, which is something that we can outsource to professionals um, and streamline this whole process. Once the data is analyzed, it's interpreted, and then it goes one of two ways. It's either published or it either informs a new program which would be something more relevant in the case of Nurses for Nurses. So this is a pretty standardized framework um, that's used in research um, all over the world, really. Um, but it's something especially useful for us, number one, because it allows us to develop a stream of funding that directly goes towards the students. Um, and then most importantly for me, it's not a prerequisite for the students to be involved, uh, interested in research, right? So the student can be as involved with this as possible. In the example of Kimberly, um, she really loves research, so she could be involved all the way down to analyzing and interpreting the data and actually writing up a publication. But if we wanted to work with Victor, and if he wanted to run a project around the dental health that he does around his communities, he might not be too interested in research. So he can um, determine the outline based on what his needs are and what he wants to produce, um, and then just continue holding his events. And once the data is collected, we handle that, um, be it as part of research department or with um, the number of experts that we uh, currently work with and hope to work with. So down the line, this scales up nicely because um, me as the person who coordinates these, um, these research projects, I can have a person per student. So for example, Luz right now is the point person for working with Kimberly. She's the one responsible for helping her out with research, answering any questions she has. Um, sort of forming how she's going to be answering, uh, asking questions and collecting data. Um, somebody like Luz could then work with Victor. Somebody like Luz could also work with a number of students, all coordinated um, by me. So that takes a lot of things off of my plate, where I was previously writing up the papers myself. Now I can just coordinate that. Um, and then the more of a network we build in Nicaragua, the more we can get uh, our students in touch with experts down there. So a researcher in a university, uh, of which we know a few, uh, could help the students directly in Nicaragua with determining their research outline and that develops the foundation for the alumni network. If we have a group of professionals in Nicaragua that not only are in touch with our students before graduation but are still in touch with their students after graduation um, when employment becomes an issue for example, uh, that forms a really strong basis for an alumni network and a really clear idea of how our students can benefit from, from all of this. So that's my main goal for the coming year. Um, as far as research is concerned, and then secondary to that is grants. So there hasn't, like historically grants has been a bit trickier, um, and my goal for the year is to just standardize how we apply for grants and how we find grants, and then to get people to, um, to do the work. 
again, because if I am currently writing up most of the research that we're doing, plus searching for grants myself, plus applying for them, it just takes a lot of time. Uh, cool, let's jump in. Uh, I'm not going to be very long. My name is Mike Carlson. I am Director of Operations. Uh, it's nice to meet folks that I haven't met before, um, but I know most faces, uh, and I think most folks know me. Um, my role in the organization, I've been around for about four years, uh, four and a bit, longest serving volunteer besides Andrew. Um, Amanda and Mike Cohen probably uh, are nipping at my heels a little bit um, and have been around since for a long time. Uh, but my role in the organization is to kind of catch all. I do a lot of things. Uh, I do the fundraising side, uh, communications, events, um, legal, financial, just kind of oversee the direction and really at the end of the day make sure that uh, no one gets hurt, no one goes to jail, um, that we don't make commitments that we can't follow up with, that sort of stuff. So in that vein, uh, the operations update really has two parts. One, sort of the operations of the organization, and for that I'll speak to volunteers, and the second one would be finances, um, because we want to make sure that we're really transparent with where our finances are at. Everybody knows it's on record, and folks and future volunteers who hopefully are watching at some point may be able to actually say, like, oh, okay, that's how much money you have and make and all that sort of stuff. So. First things first, with the, um, the overall operations, uh, and I think that's pretty reliant on our number of volunteers. We have a good number of core volunteers, and I think that's been a, as a result of slowly in 2018 just adding on good people and creating a, some sort of nurturing environment for some reason why people want to come back and uh, uh, keep coming back. Uh, and so at this point, we've again gone through the tumultuous sort of ups and downs of volunteers, but at the end of the day, um, we have a larger team, a very effective team of people. We're really excited uh, with current volunteers, especially uh, notably uh, comms and outreach in general, uh, which are real new additions um, very recently um, coming into 2019. And so looking forward to what they can do. Uh, we also have our friends list. We have other friends in here that are joining us uh, that we appreciate when we randomly call them up and ask them for legal advice on certain things. Um, you know who you are. And uh, yeah, the, the flow of information is always being refined and getting better, but we constantly are reviewing our processes as an organization. In terms of financials, uh, I'll just put some numbers out there just again so everybody knows and it's on record. So in general, uh, and these are not the finals, and I'll, I'll sort of round uh, for purposes. This is not the absolute final, um, but this is sort of what we got. Uh, our total income last year in 2018 uh, was about $22,000 on paper. Uh, in reality, uh, because we have donations in kind. So for example, we have a donation um, of space where we have to host a bunch of stuff, we have to hold a bunch of equipment and postcards and banners and whatever. Um, we pay for that space, but through the exchange of a receipt. So on paper it increases, but we're actually not, there's no money really being exchanged or um, things like that. So on paper our income is 22, but in reality I'd like to say um, our actual income in 2018 was 18,000. Uh, that predominantly came from uh, Canada Helps, uh, so our online portal, and we also had a number, we had a fundraiser that brought in about 2,000, uh, we had a grant that brought in about 2,000, and for the first time we also had money that came in from Canada Summer Jobs. So we were able to employ two people um, to work for a stretch of 10 weeks, uh, and that was also thanks to Mike Cohen for hearing our thing on the radio and then calling me and being like, can you apply to this thing, or you should apply to this thing, why aren't you applying to this thing? <laughs> Um, so that moves from income to expenses. Um, our total expenses, again, all in, are about $28,000. Uh, so we do not make as much as uh, we have, uh, but we do have sort of money in the bank. And again, I'd like to say, if you take that $4,000 off for in-kind donations, uh, so we end up spending about $24,000. That includes, again, the employment costs, which is new this year, um, for about $6,000 um, for the summer. And then we have predominantly our uh, student costs, which are the bulk of our what we pay. Uh, and that includes about 6,500 for Brian uh, down in Nicaragua. It includes about 2,500 for Kimberly. There's about 4,500 for Brandon. 
and about 2,500 for Victor. Now on Victor, we only paid for half the year. It's because we have a dedicated funder who's gonna support Victor. Um, so we're not too worried about funding Victor, but that'll jump up to 5,000. Uh, and Brian turned out to be a lot more expensive than we thought this year, just with extra support and stuff that he had to go through uh, with his employment and um, getting, getting on board with um, the re medical residency. In terms of other things, uh, we really run an, a lean ship. Uh, we spend about $1,000, um, $1,000 to $1,500 on total operating costs. That includes food at the AGM, that includes us running any other meetings, uh, or paying for support, or uh, just all the other things included. So we run a lean ship, um, and again, overall spend about 24. And in terms of the assets as of this month, so as of January 2019, at the end of 2018, uh, we have about $20,000 in the bank. So our long-term commitments sit at about between thirty dollars and $40,000. Uh, and so as long as we sort of stay in our current fundraising trajectory, um, we um, should be able to pay for our students. So that's a big sort of whew, sigh of relief for folks in the organization who that wasn't the case. Um, but again, our goals are to increase fundraising radically and to continue to, especially this coming year, push for grants um, and push our uh, monthly donations up quite a bit.